What's going on everybody? This video we're breaking down 19 terms that everyone should know for the game of volleyball. Let's get right into it. Term number one is deep dish. And deep dish refers to the action in volleyball when a setter brings the ball really low, really low in their hands and then flings the ball up. So typically you're gonna see a lot of deep dish setting in the outdoor beach game because the rules are a little bit more lenient in terms of how much and how long you can grip the ball. In the indoor game, you need a quicker set, less time with the ball in your hands. So you're not gonna see as much deep dish setting indoors, but on the outdoor circuit, you're gonna see a lot. A lot more ball control, a lot more hand coverage, and depth in that set just because of the variables of the outdoor game with wind and sun and sand all around you. So when people say deep dish, they're typically referring to that beach set outdoors. Number two, we have dime. Dime refers to serve receive. When the serve receive gets a perfect three pass right to the setter, we typically call that a dime. Just as simple as that, perfect money pass. To dime. On the flip side of a dime, we have a shank. And a shank is when you are passing the ball in serve receive and that ball flies off your platform and goes into the bleachers, it goes out of the court, basically anywhere that no one else on your team can touch it. Uh, we want to avoid shanks as much as possible in the game of volleyball, so we try and keep that ball inside the court, but Naturally, they're gonna have some shanks here and there, um, but we're gonna try and avoid these as much as possible. Number four, we have a go ball, which is go balls refer to a quick tempo set to the pins, typically the outside hitter. So when, when you hear an outside hitter calling go, 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 that means they want a quick tempo, one tempo set out to their position. Um, there's some other terms for this quick tempo set. Some teams use shoots, um, some teams just use signals, but uh, regardless, go ball means quick tempo to the outsides. Number five, we have reversing the flow. This refers to when the setter switches the direction of the set across the other side of the court. So if the ball pulls the setter to the front left of the court, and he or she sets that ball back to the opposite on the other side of the court, that's called reversing the flow. It's really important for setters to vary their selection of sets to different attackers. As much as we like to have our setters make the easy set all the time, sometimes you have to get the block out of position and the best way to do that is reversing the flow forward, backward, back row, and different scenarios to keep them on their toes. Next term is jumbo. This is something that's more frequent in the outdoor game. A lot of outdoor doubles are using that jumbo. This is typically when you contact the ball with either two finger knuckle or a poke and that ball goes over the head of the defenders in the back third of the court. So you're really trying to get a high loopy, a high loopy contact that just goes over their head in a place they're not expecting it. That's, that's called a jumbo. Number seven is the term housed. You don't wanna get housed. This is when you get absolutely stuff blocked. When you hit a ball and the block, and the block puts that ball immediately in the ground, that's when you get housed. Definitely something you wanna avoid if you're an attacker, and it's something you wanna do if you're a blocker. Number eight is a gator. No, this is not a reptile. This refers to a way of digging the ball. You'll see this a lot in the outdoor game. Typically, players will have their hands together, sometimes like this, sometimes like this. It's resembling kind of that gator chomping motion, but really it's kind of an in-between between a platform dig and having your hands up. So you're just in the middle here, trying to get a contact on the ball. It's called a gator, just because it's kind of in between both. Number nine, we have the scoopy, which refers to scooping the ball up with your platforms independent of each other. This is kind of the evolution of the game we've been talking about on defense a lot. So keeping those palms up and just scooping the ball. This is something we're trying to teach to all players at all levels, but um, 
showing the ability to scoop the ball on defense will get you really far in this game. Number 10 is the split step, and the split step refers to how you approach serve receive and how you approach defense with your feet instead of being flat footed on the back of your heels you kind of take that jump step and then attack the ball wherever it's going instead of letting it come to you i'm going to do a video on this in the future so stay tuned to that number 11 we have the hybrid which refers to a serve in between a jump serve and a float jump float toss but a top spin attack on the ball so it's kind of a combination between the two hybrid serve number 12 is 10 line. The 10 line is the 10 meter line, which separates the front and back court. Sometimes player will say they hit 10 line if they can hit a ball in front of that line. It's pretty impressive if you can do that at a young age and even the higher levels you get with bigger blocks up there. If you can bounce a ball in front of the 10 foot line, you're going places. Number 13 is the campfire. This is a location on the court, kind of the center between all the positions in base defense. So it's right behind the middle blocker, right in front of the zone six defender. This is a good place for setters to dump the ball. Not a bad place to tip the ball from the BIC if you don't know where else to go. Kind of that crossing lane of all other zones where defenses can run into trouble. Number 14, the D ball. This is a back row attack on the right side. Some teams don't run a D ball attack at all, but if you have a strong right side hitter when they're in the back row, having that option on the right side to give them some attacks is gonna be good. So being aware of what that is called if you play that position, really important. Number 15, out of system. This means any ball that is not a perfect pass. So when it's a one or a two pass that brings the setter typically outside of the 10 foot line to have to set the ball, that means you're in an out of system play where you can't run everything you typically want to run. So you have to maybe slow down your offense a bit um, and find ways to score more creatively than your traditional up-tempo in system setting. Number 16, this one's for all the parents out there that are trying to learn the game, understand all the terms they need to know. And this is something that a lot of coaches, a lot of parents, a lot of teammates will say, whenever someone gets a contact on the ball on defense, so whether it's a dig or a contact that someone else can play the ball, typically people are gonna say good touch or good up. You're gonna hear that a lot in the club circuit, a lot of parents saying, good up, good up, good touch, good touch. Um, so just something to be aware of. Number 17, we have recycle, which means purposely hitting that ball into the block with a little less force than normal. So, and the purpose of that is so the offense can reset and get another quality swing on the ball. So purposely putting that ball on the block playing defense behind it, and then getting another chance at a better attack. Number 18 is another thing that parents or coaches might say, good use. This is when the attacker uses the block or tools the block. So it might be pushing the ball into the blocker's hands and then it goes out of bounds, which would be the attacker's point. And when that happens, you might hear someone say good use. And the last one, number 19, we have domed. You don't wanna get domed. Number one for your health and safety, getting hit in the head is not good. Um, I've had concussions in my history and past and getting hit in the head with the volleyball is never something you want. But a lot of kids and a lot of players in the game today will tap their head like this whenever someone gets either hit in the face or hit in the dome on a block or on defense. So uh, just something to be aware of if you're playing today's game and that happens to you. That wraps it up for some of the important volleyball terms that you need to know. Let me know if I missed any in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Plenty more videos to come. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next time. Peace.